Our next location is Keystone, as NS-813, an eastbound empty Tidewater train, floats west behind a pair of older GE motors. These empties were headed to Williamson and eventually to the Big Omar Mine on the Lenore branch. The track in the foreground is the lead to the small yard at Ickman. Looking the opposite direction, we see an empty train, NS-811, passing the remains of a derailment that happened a few weeks prior. These empties are heading for the Coal Mountain operation on the former Virginian Cub Creek branch. Our next location is the Huger Twin Tunnels as NSS-24 heads east. This train has loaded at the Jamboree operation on the Jamboree Spur near Phelps, Kentucky. Back to the Pocahontas main at Panther, we see a westbound empty grain train in S-54W flying west. snowy day, we're now at Naugatuck as NSU-01 starts up the Lenore branch with empties for the Island Creek 25 operation at the end of the branch. The Lenore branch has continued to stay fairly busy during the bad times for the coal business. Leading the train is a pair of EMD products, a Union Pacific SD-70M and a former Atchison, Topeka and Santa Fe SD-75M, now owned by Norfolk Southern. Our next location is Elk Creek, as another 823 continues east towards Weller. The rusting track to the right is the upper Elk Creek Spur.
We're now at Hurley, as engineer Paul Whitaker brings the 823 East with some extra power, including the Penn Central and Nickel Plate Heritage units in the middle of the power consist. This train would load at the Buck 2 mine on the end of the Levisa branch. Branch NS820 drops down runaway straight as snow flurries fall. The winter of 2020 brought more snow than usual to the area, and Chase took full advantage of it. To wrap up our visit to Virginia Lee, we see NS-821 struggling up the grade with empties for Consol. From the other side of the signal, we see the U-60 heading up to Sun Coke at Dismal. The crew brought up 35 empties from Weller to deliver to the Coke plant. <laughs> 